in our mind that everything has now been changed. And so You didn't take time. You didn't take time. You didn't take time to know. You see, because after all that exercise, your body has lost fluid. And you might be a little dehydrated, which occurs when our body it loses more fluid than what it can take in. The being dehydrated, it occurs when we have physical activity, eat, drinking tea, coffee, coke, or alcohol, or even dieting can dehydrate us. And we are constantly, we're constantly told over and over again not to ignore our thirst. When Jesus cried, on the cross, I thirst. There is no doubt that he meant it. Just, just his physical condition. He had suffered since the Passover the night before, probably the last time that he had a drink. And this, this drink would reduce his, 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 his body fluids to a level where he was thirsty. And so all the he had been hanging on the cross for six hours, sweating, struggling to breathe, bent over and bleeding, thirstier than he had ever been. So it's no surprise, church. It's no surprise that he cried at thirst. But one word, one word in the Greek and Arabic, there are two references to drink at the cross. The first one offered to Jesus at the beginning of the crucifixion contained gas, used as a narcotic to help get pain. Jesus rejected this. But the second one Jesus was given, which he received, is described as sour wine. The soldiers took along this drink for themselves because they expected to sit in the hot sun until their duty was complete. Knowing the danger of drinking the local water, they use wine. 
first. Jesus declares that his thirst, expressing a need for that thirst, needed to be met. And he thirsted physically. Some people, by my elder, for instance, can be so cool in a crisis, so strong under pressure, which would inflame a crippled, the lesser mortals like maybe you or I. But I wonder, my brothers and sisters, I wonder if they are human at all. One would almost think from the way that Jesus had responded during the trials and now six hours of crucifixion that he wasn't really suffering. After all, it seemed he seemed to handle it calmly and patiently. And that is until you hear the cry of distress. This display is true humanity and no uncertain. He felt the moment of dehydration. He was extremely thirsty, clearly fulfilling the words written about a thousand years earlier. My strength is dried up like a ocean, and my tongue bleeds to my jaws. You have brought me to the dust of death. I thirst. I thirst. God does not. Angels do not. And we shall not in glory. But we thirst not. My brothers and sisters, because we are human and are living in a world of sorrow. And Christ thirst because he was a man. And as a man, he entered fully into our suffering. And even the suffering of thirst often associated with those morally wounded. Y'all don't hear it this morning, but he not only did he have a physical thirst, he also had a spiritual thirst. He, his thirst was real, but it was just not physical. And we need to remember that Jesus was on the cross as a substitute for sinners. And therefore, we're going through, and, and, and we're to remember that the substitute, who was he a substitute for, my brothers and sisters? He was a substitute for us because he looked through the corner of time and he looked from generation to generation and he saw us as sinners that needed to be saved. And so that's why he went to the cross. He didn't have to go to the cross. He didn't need to go to the cross. He didn't fire for God. Yeah, yeah. He had a thirst for us yeah. so that we, that we would grow to have a closer connection of the soul and body. That what occurred in affects the other. Yeah. And we read in Proverbs 17 and 22, a merry heart does ruin like nest, but a broken spirit drives the wrong. You see, in this Remember the parable that Jesus told of Lazarus and the rich man, where Jesus highlights thirst as a symbol of experience of divine punishment. The rich man, after the life, finds himself in hell, agonizing by the inward thirst, begging that Abraham would allow to be placed a drop of water on his fourth tongue. Yeah. It was a symbol for dryness of a soul, a dryness that could only be relieved by communion with God. Uh -huh. A communion. Yeah. A communion which those in hell would never know. Yeah. It would be astonishing if yeah. Christ did not experience here the thirst of that man yeah. in the parable, but that he did. He held on to God by faith, and yet without feeling him mm. to be, he cried. He said, I thirst. Yeah. I thirst. Yeah. And then the sinner knows something of this thirst, even on this life. Jesus points this out to the woman at the Sumerian way. When in John 
4 and 13, he says of natural water. And by implications, implications, all the things people pursue in order to satisfy the inner thirst. But he's not talking about that. He said that whosoever drinks of this water, they will thirst again. You see, let me tell you something. Nothing this world offers can satisfy the inner thirst. Yeah. Yeah. You see, the psalmist knew the answer to that deep inner thirst of the soul. And as the deer pants for the water brook, so pants my soul for you, oh God. Yeah. You see, Jesus had been forsaken from God because he bore our sins. Yeah. And he knows its consequences of thirsting after God. But communion once again with his father, it was not only his mouth, but his soul that was for yeah. us. The content tells us that it is uttered in the climax of his son. Having cried out, my God, my God, why have God forsaken me? And as such, this cry, our thirst, becomes a banner of the reality of that suffering. My brothers and sisters, it was a victory when Jesus went to Calvary's cross. Yeah, yeah, yeah. By this word, when Jesus identified himself to the whole world as the Savior, he sang, alone can I meet man's thirst now and free them from enjoying that thirst intensified throughout all eternity. Returning to John 4 and 14, we note that in answer to the inner thirst of this woman, which is unsatisfied by any and every solution the world can offer. Jesus says, but whosoever drinks of the water that I shall give him will never thirst again. But the water that I shall give him will become a fountain of water springing up in everlasting life. It is a spiritual thirst. And that's why in pursuit of the pleasures and promises of this natural world, it can never be satisfied. I don't care if you get to be a CEO of a company. I don't care if you have all the money in the world. I don't care if you have more cars than you can count. If you don't know Jesus, Jesus Christ. Yeah. 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 